excuse us, excuse us, before you disappear, we're having a, a beard checking day today. A we're beard checking day, we failed. I, I failed, I failed. We're yeah. from uh, SBS, with a, a, a series of shows, not only about beards, but I'm, I'm, you know, I have a personal interest. I just wondered if you could tell us how old your beard was. This one? What? Yes. Eight months? This one? Mm. How long have you had it? How old's my beard? About seven and a half years. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's the been, question. No, it's been on and off, on and off, yeah. But it's seven and a half years no. since you last shaved. You reckon? Yeah, must be. Must be. Bald, that is, yeah. Yes, that's what I mean, yeah. yes. Yeah. Has it always been like this? No, it goes back to yours, and then sometimes it gets longer. And Right. How's, what's the longest it's been? Um, right. Why did you cut it back? Um, other people's opinions. Yes. <laughs> what is your name? Linda. Linda. And what is your name? Vic. Vic. Are you married? De facto. As good as? Yeah. Or as bad as? Yeah. Better than. It's better than. Why is it better, Linda? Just is, for yeah. us. How long have you been together? Eight years. Eight years. Mm. Longer than his beard. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was clean shaven. That's right, I was clean shaven when I met you, wasn't I? Yeah? yeah? Did you encourage him to grow it? Yep. Yeah? Why? Why do you like beards? I like his. You like his? Just because it's downright ugly without the beard. <laughs> <laughs> How did you uh, meet? Was it, a, it wasn't obviously a beard competition. No, it, was it wasn't. It was accidental beard. through our children attending the same school. Right. And you were picking no, them up at school? it was set up by the kids. Yeah, it was set up by the kids. Really? How? Oh, they, the kids played matchmaker, they did, and got us together. What did they do? How did they engineer this? Come round to meet my dad. Oh, that's really straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you did? And I did. And was this the first time that anybody had suggested that you come and meet their dad? Definitely. Yeah? <laughs> We've got to go, Linda. You've got yes. to meet him. You've got to go. All right. Yeah. Have you got one more minute? Yeah, I have. Yeah. What? Yeah. You have to go? Yes. Well, before you go, can you tell us, when you first went over and met your children's... No, met his... Children's father. Children's yeah. father. What was your first reaction? I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> what, cha what changed your mind? I got to know him. Why did you think, oh no, when you first saw him? I was very shy. Oh yeah? yeah. And I'm a fringe dweller. You're a fringe dweller? I like to be right on the edge of things, you know, I really do. And um, the house was full of fish tanks. And full of people? Yeah, full of people. And yeah. Junk everywhere, because well, I collect junk. Yeah, rubbish. We'll get to that in a second, but what was your first reaction when Linda came over? I mean, you knew that she was coming over to meet you. No, I didn't, actually. <laughs> actually, about two weeks before, I'd seen her walking down the street, and she was a new face in town, and I'd seen her, and I, I said to the kids, geez, I'd like to meet her, and bang, the kids set it up. And when she walked in, what, what, what did you think? Wow, it's the bird I've seen walking down the street. <laughs> Can we keep talking to um, your man? Go for it. He's fascinated when you start him. No. Oh, we, we started him. Good luck with the Wait, job. Oh, well, depends if they piss me off or not. I'll find you anyway. <laughs> How many children do you have? Now, nine. Nine? Six of mine. And the other three are Linda's? Well, four is one, one between Linda and I and, right. and five with the first wife. So where did that take place? Where did you meet your first wife and, and, and sort of have Up children? in the mountains. Right. Yeah, and then it just went wrong and she left, or...? I did a stint of working away, you know, going from construction site to construction site, and it just didn't work out, you know, right. it sort of broke down because right. of separation or something. What was the process that started you off collecting things that you collect? Well, I've always been a collector. I've always collected, you know, things that people don't like, you know, because that's, that's what I'm into, you know. People find my collections revolting. You know, they do, they find them sick. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I mean, in the lounge room, the, the centrepiece in the lounge room is a kangaroo skull. And, and people just don't sort of think that you collect them sorts of things, you know. Is it in good condition or is it broken up? Or? No, it's in perfect condition. It's oh, I really see. Good one. So you just pick things up, literally? Oh, yeah, flowers. I collect, you know, flowers and rocks and sticks even. You know, they take me fancy, I could. Do what, just the shapes? And yeah, just shapes. Them? Right. Do you ever buy things for the...? Yeah, I buy... I, I like oils, you know, I like scented oils. I collect scented oils. 
And miniatures. The only chance you've got is to buy miniatures, you know. Miniatures of? Anything. If it's little and it's miniature and it's... Oh, I see. Yeah. Any, anything that's a miniature? Yeah, you know, like little dolls, little animals, little soldiers, little cars. What is it that attracts you about that stuff? Is it just because you like to have lots of stuff around? Well, just recently I found out that I was Koori, you know, like not, not, not white and not black and sort of in between. And it just changed my whole life. Look, you know, everything just sort of changed in that one fell swoop. Really? How did you find out? I mean, grandmother died and, and the parents started talking about it, you know. Yeah. But before then it was, you know, no go, no nothing. They're just as hearsay because no one wants to really talk about it, you know. This is the family that you come from. Tell us a bit about the family. Why don't they want to talk about it? Oh, I suppose during the days that they were brought up it was taboo, you know, like... Uh -huh. Nobody wanted to know a half-caste or whatever. I mean... You only know what you know. When you discovered this, what was... You said everything turned around in, in one instant for you. Well, everything was better because I suppose not belonging to anything and then wanting to belong to something else, you know. That's, I suppose that's what I really want. I want to belong to something, you know. But you seem pretty... Uh, you don't seem to be um, anti-people. I mean, you don't... Oh, no, I'm not anti-people. I, I like... I, I suppose I like most people. I like my own privacy, you know. Yes. You like your own space. People can't come closer than that. Yeah. You know, sort of... <laughs> it's making me pretty nervous at the moment because it's pretty close, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And it's sort of um, right in my face. Well, I'd stand back. It was just No, that's all right, that's all right. I wanted to capture you. If your... I can't handle it, I can take off. What about your life? How do you feel your life has gone? Have you had it rough or are you pretty... pretty oh, no, I've been pretty level all the time, you know, just sort of flown along. And you're able to survive as a as you say, a fringe dweller. Yeah, well, that's what I, well. I... I'm a fringe dweller. I survive, yeah. I mean, as long as I pay me bills, it doesn't matter. This is a frock that my friend Jasper gave me for Christmas. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. Because my name is Claudie Frock. All right. Claudie, oh. that's a fringe name. <laughs> no, my, my name used to be Claudia Waters, but I changed it to Claudie Satan Sunday School Tupperware Linoleum. Keep yourself nice, fuzzy, fun fur frock. That's just the first name, is it? No, that's my whole name. <laughs> you're on holidays and you're staying in Canberra? No, I'm leaving for Sydney this afternoon. You're getting out? Yes, indeed. How long have you got off? Oh, just uh, six days. Six days is not a long break. Is that enough? That's all I was able to take for a number of reasons. One is that I'm extremely busy. Uh, uh, but so, uh, and also, uh, it's my son's school holidays. So I thought I'd take what I could. Uh, which is not much, but it's enough. Yeah. I've been under some uh, pressure too uh, yeah. in my work, so it'd be nice to have at least a small break. Yeah. Uh, From what do you do? I uh, work for the Office of National Assessments, uh, which is part of the Prime Minister's Department. We uh, analyse international relations uh, for the Prime Minister and other ministers and senior officials. And I cover uh, Bosnia and uh, Russia. So You've been busy been then. busy. <laughs> Did you want to go into the diplomatic service or did you sort of stray into it? I strayed into it. A friend of mine at university, in the last few months of my university course, had gone into diplomacy and uh, spoke of it and it appealed to me. Uh, but my intentions had been completely different until then. I wanted to become an academic and teach ancient history. Uh, so this is quite different. Do you think that you are fairly, well, I mean, you, I use the word typical very loosely, of a Canberra, of, of what Australia sees as a Canberra bureaucrat? Is it public servant? Or are you different? It's hard to say. Uh, maybe I'm a little different. Um, I, I wasn't, I, I'm not referring incidentally to your personal characteristics so much yes. as your lifestyle. Yes, perhaps I, perhaps I typify the sort of stereotype in some ways. Uh, yeah, sort of, well, I suppose Canberra's divided into two sorts of public servants, those who are permanent and live here in a Canberran way, mm -hmm. and those who, uh, who tend to travel uh, a lot and then come back here and live in a slightly different way. And perhaps I'm somewhat typical of the second time, right. really. And personally, not? No, personally I'm different from everyone. You've got a son? I have a son, a yes. Son. yes. And you have a wife? I had a wife, I'm now divorced. 
and he actually lives in Sydney. He's visiting me at the moment, right. and we're driving down together to, uh, to Sydney this afternoon. Have you been divorced long? About two or three years. Yeah. Pressure of work had anything to do with that? Maybe. I think it was more complicated than that. So, yeah. But, but there was an aspect is. of it. So <laughs> I used to be in foreign affairs uh, yeah. and did a lot of travel. Yes. Uh, and I think that had something to do with it as well. My wife, my ex-wife is from South America yeah. and uh, she had some problem uh, acclimatising to Canberra. And I think that was part of it as well. Did you meet on a mission? Uh, yes, I was is posted in Chile. And that's so she's Chilean? Met. She's Chilean, yeah. that's right. Yeah. How long were you there? Three years. Three years and you met a wife in three years? Brought her back. Yeah, well, I met a wife in about three months. No three more months. than that, about six months. That's it. But in a situation like that, um, is it awkward for you to make contact uh, on a romantic level with with a, with a national in, in the host country? No, not in the least. Uh, it was awkward. I was posted in Moscow previously uh, in Soviet times, and then it was a complete no-no. You couldn't do it. They couldn't do it, and you couldn't do it. So. Yeah. But in a country like Chile, even under Pinochet, which is when I was there, uh, no, there was no problem at all, providing you were sensible and there were, no. Were you sensible? Sometimes I'm too sensible. <laughs> <laughs> and how old is your son? Fifteen. When you separated, was there a, a discussion about the son, about who should look after your oh, son? Oh, yes, of course, yes. But it wasn't, a, and it wasn't an argument, uh, really. It wasn't uh, an issue between us. It wasn't? It was not, no, because uh, we both realised that it was better for him at that age. He was yes. then about, when we first separated, I guess he was about 10 or 11. It was better for him to be uh, with his mother. But uh, I see a great deal of him, and I expect to see even more of him as he gets older and right. approaches university age. Right. With, with this um, uh, new position that you have, in which you presumably you travel less? less? Uh, I travel less. I travel, but much less, yes. Yeah. yes. Is that good or bad? It's good. It's good from his viewpoint. Yeah. So he's at a uh, sensitive time, approaching the end of his schooling, and it's good for him to have me yeah. around and n for him not to have to be uprooted. So, yeah. You say. So obviously, by the sound of it, you're, you're pretty well focused on your son at the moment. I mean, he's sort of something of a priority. Yeah. Yes, of course, and so yeah. should be too. How do you see the future? Do you intend to stay a bachelor? It's hard to say. Uh, I'd like to uh, marry again, uh, but I'm also a very choosy person, uh, and also recognise I'm probably a fairly difficult person to live with as well. So it could take some time, but I'm in no no enormous hurry. I've got my life is very full, uh, and the bachelor life I think may be overrated, but there are some things to be said for it uh, as well. You say you're difficult to live with. In what way? Well, you should ask my wife. <laughs> well, I would if she were here. <laughs> well, I'm very demanding and Are rather critical. Uh, Are you? When you say demanding, in in the sort of in the sort of sense that people might uh, call, let's say, chauvinistic. Are you sort of the no, old school? No, 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 not like not in that way. It's more in the sense of, you know, without being anally retentive. I like order in my mm -hmm. life, and I like to plan, and I like things mm -hmm. to happen uh, in a sort of in a relatively predictable way, to the extent that one can instill that but yeah. also I like the unpredictable too yes. and the, but also there are many sides to my character which you know it's sometimes difficult for one person to adapt to I also recognize this uh, and is uh, is your ex-wife uh, now sort of coping okay in Sydney? yeah she's remarried uh, coping very okay <laughs> <laughs> do you have a perhaps an unconscious but a, a list of requirements that that you feel a partner should satisfy in your case yeah perhaps I do uh, if I think about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first attraction would obviously be physical, so what... Yes, well, no, that in that I'm, I'm reasonable, I think. Uh, I mean, it, it's so uh, subjective. But yes, there has to be a physical attraction. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I look for intelligence and, if possible, intellectualism uh, and a degree of culture. Um, career outlook uh, is important too I think you know that the person should work and, and have some interest in uh, in what she does um, and so you're not uh, looking for a, an unpaid housekeeper oh, really no, 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 no. <laughs> you're looking no, for a, anything more boring a mental know. mate absolutely yeah yeah do you have time to talk to us at all no sorry you don't no, okay I'm sorry. all right sorry I beg your pardon you have a very interesting accent oh thank you where is it from um, I'm American originally but it doesn't Utah. sound American. Yeah, people have told me that. I don't know where I got it. Where did you get it? I have no Utah. idea, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. How long have you been here? Uh, a little over two years. 
Why did you come here? I'm married. You married an Australian? Yep, I did. Where did you meet? Uh, I met here, actually. So you came here not with him? No. No. On your own? Mm -hmm. Looking for adventure? Job? No, just for holidays. For holidays? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what happened? Um, met the love of my life. How? <laughs> Where? In his clothing shop. He used to work at a clothing shop. Were you buying clothes from him? Yes, I was. So the first time you met him, you gave him money? Yeah, no, not technically. I put it on hold. You did? And, and then I came back for it. You went back to pick up your jacket. And then what happened? Um, well, I, I asked him out to a particular function, but that particular function was a bit expensive. And he couldn't afford to go. It was $100 a ticket, which is excessive. But um, What was it? It was for the look of the year for Elite. It's a modeling agency, and they choose, well, I mean, it's very boring, modeling is boring, but... Um, Why did you want to go? Because Illy is my agency in New York, and of course, I guess, just moral support for I the see. home agency. I see. <laughs> so you were a model? Uh, yes, I was for 10 years. Right. And so you didn't go to this function. What, what did you oh, do? Oh, yes, I did go to oh, the function. Did? Yes, I did. He didn't. Um, but then, you know, I asked him, well, if you'd ever like to do anything else, my number's on the lay-by slip, please give me a call. Uh -huh. And he did. How quickly did you get married after that? Um, well, he asked me, I think, three months after we'd met. Mm -hmm. Did you have any hesitation? No, no way. Were you hoping he would ask? I, I had already assumed that we were. Yeah? To be honest, it surprised mm -hmm. me that he asked me. Mm -hmm. You'd just taken it for granted. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was such a close yeah. relationship. Yeah, I guess away. so. Love it first sight almost. Yeah, it was. What do you think about all that religion and, and so on? Are you a religious um, person? I'm a spiritual person, but I think that, oh gosh, this is, we're not supposed to discuss these things, are we? I think, unfortunately, religion is kind of not really helping people because it's, I think, trying to control people with guilt. And I think that's not a good thing. I definitely believe that there is some type of higher intelligence. But I also believe that we are a part of that higher intelligence. So that it's, it's not a separate thing. Right. And that's my argument with organized religion. Do you see eye to eye with David on this? David doesn't believe in anything like that, no. Right. So, he, so he's, he's, he's not a spiritual person? Um, he is. He lives a good life, but he doesn't believe the same things that I do. You said you were a model for 10 years. Mm. How did you get into modeling? Um, well, actually, it was a look of the year. That, uh, well, technically, that's how I went to New York. I, I had started modeling in Utah and was there for a year. What kind of modeling was that? Um, print work, just like pictures that you would see, like advertisements in. Not catwalk? Oh, no, <laughs> no. Terrified of performing. I'm not, <laughs> not good at that at all. Right. Mm. And 10 years is a long time. It must have been reasonably successful. Yes. Yeah, it was a good job. But unfortunately, after, you know, my life changed and I started learning about the chemicals that they're putting mm -hmm. in food and mm -hmm. in makeup, and I just, I realized, well, hey, I won't use this stuff. Mm -hmm. I can't promote it either. Mm -hmm. So I had to look for a career change. And? What did I'm, you find? I'm working at a second-hand clothing store, right. but I feel, I mean, that's like something I feel good about. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not promoting, you know, overconsumption, waste, chemical, whatever, so I feel much better. And David still has a clothing shop? No, he's in the Army. <laughs> How on earth did he end up in the Army? <laughs> Wanted to join the Army. Is he happy in the Army? Yes, I think so. I, I think um, he seems all right. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. So your relationship is as good as it was? Uh, it's better. It's better. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, well, you appreciate the time. And what is he doing in the army? Uh, infantry. Just regular. Right. Learning how to shoot people. How do you feel about that? Well, to me, I mean, this is just a personal opinion, but it, I almost kind of feel maybe, well, you can't make a judgment for other people. For myself, personally, I would find a different way to try and work towards a better whatever not just earth but mm -hmm. entire everything mm -hmm. other than that but that's just my choice I mean you can't if I said anything it would be a judgment and it's it's not right to make a judgment
What do you do? Oh, I'm a carpenter. What is that? What, I mean, uh, specialising in anything or? Well, mainly just uh, cottage work and. Uh, building houses? Yeah, building houses and um, large sort of building site work too. Are you married? No, single. Single. No, yeah. he's, not he's engaged. <laughs> to this lady? Yeah. Hi. Come and say hello. Hi. What's your name? Lisa. Lisa? Yes. <laughs> When did you get engaged? No, we didn't. We you didn't. didn't? He just bought me a ring. Well, that's a start. I like a friendship ring. <laughs> friendship, a friendship ring. ring. How long have you known each other? Four years. Yeah, that's yes. a long time. Yes. Yeah. Where did you meet? Uh, we met out at a club at Blacktown. I was working in the club. Uh, Celebrities. Picking up glasses. And she was from Blacktown. Lived in Blacktown all her life. And after about four, five, maybe six weeks, I asked her out. She kept coming up to the club. Yeah. And I was happy to take her out. Now wait a second, let me get this right. You were picking up glasses. Yeah. What were you doing? Dancing, enjoying my life. <laughs> she was supposed to be there dancing, trying to lose weight, she said. <laughs> you mean dancing <laughs> dancing on the stage? Yeah, yeah, everything. <laughs> everything. You were a dancer? I was, I was a little rager. Yeah, was. <laughs> what do you mean? What, he's tamed you, has he? He's tamed me a lot. <laughs> Whitened you down? <laughs> he has. <laughs> you don't dance anymore? Oh, I do now and then with my girlfriend, yes. Yeah. Um, what about with him? No, he doesn't dance. <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> well, you better teach him. You know, you can have private lessons here. No, I teach him elsewhere. <laughs> well, you can't always, you can't always teach. I'm not that I'm old, but old dogs need tricks. Yeah, you're not that old. How are you? How old are you? 25. 25 and? And I'm 25. So what do you do when you go out now? When you go out together? Well, unfortunately, we end up at, at like an RSL club, which is because we're from the western suburbs. And we end up sort of playing a few poker machines, uh, which is a total waste of time. Total waste of time, but yeah, you do it. do it for fun. <laughs> right. And we might go out yeah. to, uh, for a dance. We watch a lot of videos at home. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to drink too much. Yeah. What's your favourite drink? I'd say uh, Tui's or Reshes. Okay, you're a beer That's man. A beer, yeah. Sambuca, Sambuca. And, and Tea Maria. Where are you from ethnically? What is your ethnic background? Malta. 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 Hi, everyone in Malta. You, you were born here? <laughs> yes, I was in Blacktown. Right. And now, and since then, I've moved to Marylands. Yeah. And do your parents know that you're going out with this guy? Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Do they approve? No. <laughs> no, not specifically. No. <laughs> it would have been better if he was Maltese, is that right? Yes. Yeah, well, oh, not necessary, as long as, you know, yeah, they, they approve of him, yeah. you know, but um, they'd rather see me with the Maltese man. And what did you tell them when they first objected? Well, what could, what could they, what could they, you know, what could they say? You know, they couldn't say much. I'm, I'm a rebellious child. So whereabouts are you living? I'm living at Marylands, and he's living at Campbelltown. You're not living together. No, no, no. I don't, I don't believe in that. You don't want to live together. No, I don't believe. Oh, in we've that. done it. We've, we've done it. We've, we've done it. We've but, experienced that. You know, there's no big deal about that. I'd rather be taken out. You know, and uh -huh. you, you know what I mean, uh -huh. like a boyfriend and girlfriend yes. relationship. If I want to get married, yeah. if I want to live de facto, I'll get married. Put it that way. Nice. No, I don't believe in de facto relationships. But you don't want to get married either. So at the moment no, you're no, in... no. I'm in between. I'm still yeah. young. I'm still thinking about what my, what right. I'm going to do for a career. Right. You know. What are the choices? Of of my career? Yeah. Uh, travel and tourism. Have you done any of that? I've went to college this year for yeah. travel and tourism, international travel and tourism. I'd like to work in Malta actually. Right. Yeah, for right. a couple of years. Right. Would you go to Malta? I'd love to go there for a holiday. Yeah? Yeah. You wouldn't want to stay and live there for a while? Um, well, I mean, supposing being, being like from a uh, Scots-Irish background, I probably wouldn't sort of be suited to be there full time. You reckon? Yeah. Now, but what would happen, you see, now if Lisa got a terrific job, which took her out of Sydney, would you go with her? No, I wouldn't. You'd stay here? Yeah, because she'd be set in her ways and she'd want to um, a t pick up the ball and just run with it, and that'd probably get in the way between trying to get on and be friends and all the rest of it. Right. So we'd have to uh, deal with that as it is. I'm just about to get a ticket too. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to give this man a ticket? <laughs> well, you, but you won't if we let him go now, will you?